Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining. Appreciate it. Hey, today we have a a really stellar panel here for Ask the Ask the Experts um, from Dell Technologies. I work with all these guys pretty much daily, and um, you never get enough of talking with them. So we have uh, no 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 question is off limits. We've got a few questions we'll kind of start with, but then like to open it up for everybody to also. You know, let's let's have the conversation. That's why we're here. That's why everybody came in. So the session today is going to be kind of around architecting VDI and and robo solutions for this distributed world we're we're living in. Couldn't be even more evident now. And then harnessing the power of of the Azure hybrid cloud. And just real quick, myself, I'm Robert Saunders. I'm a principal systems engineer supporting pre-sales engagements for. Microsoft workloads and and Kenny over to you. Thanks, Rob. Yes, yeah, so I lead our uh, Azure Stack Engineering Technologists team at Dell. Uh, we're the field facing arm of the product and engineering teams, uh, deeply technical and here to share knowledge around the Azure Stack family. And for me, this is one of those few nights of the year when I'm let out of my managerial cage and I get to talk tech. So I'm super excited to be here. Michael. Thanks, Robert. Thanks, Robert. Uh, so uh, my name is Michael Wells. Uh, I'm part of the Azure Stack Engineering Technologist team uh, working for Kenny uh, and uh, uh, I cover uh, along with a colleague of mine uh, uh, cover uh, North and South America. Thanks Michael. Leon? Excellent. Hey, thank you. So I'm Leon Harris. I'm a Global Hybrid Cloud Business Development Director within our Strategic Partnership Alliance with uh, Dell Technologies focusing on our services organization. Awesome. And we may have Lisa Clark join. Um, she was working through a little bit of um, technical difficulties there on her end, but um, she gets it sorted out. She may jump back in here and and she supports all the Azure Stack business in, in EMEA as a development strategy, strategist. So she may jump in too. So without um, further ado, let's not waste any more time. And and really one of the first questions that we that we get asked a lot and these guys do, I mean, what does hybrid mean or what we ask to our clients, what does hybrid mean to you? You know, so, um, you know, what does hybrid mean to you and how does that compare with Microsoft's approach between Dell and Microsoft? So maybe Kenny, kick it off. Oh, no pressure. Um, okay, so I mean, it's a super good question. Hybrid is a term which has been uh, around in our industry for a good few years now. But it's really only in recent uh, recent couple of years that it's really started to crystallize into something more meaningful. When we're talking about hybrid cloud as opposed to multi-cloud, what we're really talking about is consistency across the public cloud and on-premises and really decoupling the, the idea of uh, how you manage the workload and what the workload is to really be able to, to split these out and do them anywhere. So what we're seeing from an Azure perspective is really this idea of decoupling Azure from Azure across the board now. And whether that's through Azure Tech Hub, Azure Stack HCI, Azure Arc, Azure Arc Data Services, all sorts of capabilities here are really decoupling the Azure control plane, Azure services and the workloads from each other so that you can split these out and run them in different locations so that Azure is no longer uh, just a Microsoft data center and what you can do there, but really you can run in the hybrid cloud wherever you want to, however you want to, wherever is best for you. For me, that's one of the most interesting places to be in this industry today. Yeah, it is. And, and Leon, what's your perspective on kind of the same thoughts there? I know you have a little different spin. Yeah, so it's uh, it's as Kenny mentioned, uh, the hybrid cloud is uh, is very inter um, a very important fact with obviously integrations across uh, single workloads and between workloads it becomes very effective in understanding the hybrid in a way there can be uniqueness in regards to the entities that are residing on premise in a hybrid model and connectivity to hyperscalers such as Azure Public Cloud. Um, there's also associated standardization and proprietary process that can also be um, you know, uh, uh, tied to the hybrid um, to allow that integration to work more effectively within IT infrastructure. So we see that as very uh, you know, effective in a way of uh, customers being able to grow and extend as far as their, um, their cloud model and strategy. And we also look at it as a kind of a ability to um, effectively grow as they start to mature into kind of the more cloud model. Oh, awesome. That's yeah, that's that good different perspective. Mr. Wells, what about yours? 
Uh, so for me, it, it's very much along the same lines, but I, I want to highlight that that integration and consistency part, right? So so the the idea of hybrid is um, the the two should work better together, right? So you should be able to augment offerings that you have in the cloud with offerings that you have on premises and vice versa. Uh, and then the the key to doing this effectively is that consistency, right? So uh, if you have to manage different resources using different tools, using different skill sets, um, then then you're creating a headache because it's it's not just about provisioning the resources, but it's about maintaining those resources over time. If you can do this in a consistent way, regardless of where the, the resource is deployed, then you gain those operational efficiencies and you can focus on the applications uh, and not focus so much on the infrastructure. Yeah. So, you know, we had a quick question come in from Bob. Bob, thank you. Uh, what what kind of, kind the of question, question is, is, what kind of workloads, workloads are you seeing stay, stay on premises, on premises. And, and, and really open really to anyone? Uh, yeah, so I, I guess from my perspective there, um, I would actually rewrite that question slightly. So it's less what workloads are we seeing stay on premises and what workloads should run on premises? Because there's two sides to this coin. There are workloads which are already running on premises, which should stay there and will run best there as opposed to moving to the public cloud. But there are also workloads which are moving from the public cloud to on premises because that's the best place to run them. And whether that's bringing AI and machine learning or uh, IoT type scenarios back from the public cloud to the edge um, and reducing bandwidth considerations or latency considerations there, bringing real time analytics to the edge, or whether it's running a traditional enterprise application on premises because it's just not up for being refactored. It's very easy to keep running in a consistent virtualization model on premises rather than trying to move it to a cloud native model. Uh, there's a whole host of things that run best uh, best on premises and whether it's due to, uh, as I said there, um, because it's a traditional enterprise application that doesn't lend itself well to being refactored and uh, moving to a cloud native model or whether it's uh, due to data sovereignty, data governance uh, considerations, whether it's down to latency or bandwidth considerations, whether you just have literally no connectivity to the Azure public cloud uh, or as I say, you're just you're trying to bring these future focused capabilities back from the cloud to the edge as well. There are a whole host of workloads we are seeing uh, running on premises still and yeah. into the future. That's that data that creation data at the data edge, data right? Data, or data mm. creation anywhere, right? Um, uh, hoping to put the tooling right where the data is. Uh, that's the best answer. So, you know, uh, if there's, I don't see any questions here right now, but you know, maybe a, another one. Tell me, you know, when it comes to BDI, um, what are the benefits that the, the new Azure Stack HCI offering offering has and maybe Wells, what are your thoughts there? Well, so one of the big things uh, with Azure Stack HCI is with the shift to the, the licensing model and being consumed as a service, um, you're not having to pay for uh, data center licenses for an entire HCI cluster uh, like you did with the previous iterations of it. And so for a solution like VDI, where I'm not running a bunch of Windows servers, I'm running uh, Windows 10 desktops. I no longer have to buy all those Windows Server licenses, uh, it's a much more efficient use of that licensing. Uh, and, and you get all of the performance benefits of, of HCI and the fact that you can put it where you need it. You can have it close to the users uh, rather than uh, having to, to pick from, uh, granted, a large number of, of Azure data centers, but um, they're still not going to be everywhere, right? They're right. still going to be um, regions that that could be better served by having something locally. And you know, I'd, I'd ask you, Leon, I know um, you work a lot in the robo space too. When it comes to robo w for the same product, right? What are some of the benefits um, robo you can you can gain with um, remote office with the Azure H Azure Stack HCI solution? Yeah, it's, it becomes very effective, especially working with customers around the services side and helping them understand and, and um, take uh, take hold and uh, take the advantages uh, from Azure Stack HCI. The benefits that becomes very effective is how the apps are used and, and leverage it really in a very quick manner, but also being able to take full advantage of the ecosystem that they may be familiar with initially and then growing that from uh, from Azure Stack HCI and obviously the VDI uh, framework for it. Um, 
we have these conversations and consistent in helping our customers understand and gravitate and using um, the, um, the effectiveness of not only the HCI itself, but then of course our maturity in helping the customers around the service elements. But uh, it, uh, it becomes very worthwhile. And of course the, the outcomes are the key thing, the business outcomes for the customers become extremely valuable. Yeah, our, that's that's all part of the tire solution, right? Um, couldn't the services offerings or different jump off points are, are so valuable right now is there's so many things to know. Nobody can know all of it at any one time. Hey, Lisa showed up. Lisa, welcome. Thanks. Thanks for joining. Hey, everybody. Sorry about that. No, it's fine. I'm glad you showed up. So um, we don't have any. I would just turn up to the room, but we're in the virtual world. But I'm glad I'm here with you all now. Do you want to introduce yourself real quick? Go ahead. Yeah, OK, sure. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Sorry for being late. Um, I had the old forgot your password situations. Um, I'm Lisa Clark. I work at Dell Technologies. Um, I'm part of our global engineering outreach specialist team focused on Azure Stack and specifically um, supporting our sales and our customers across the EMEA region. So hey everybody and welcome to our Ask the Expert session. I was watching you guys as a guest when I couldn't join, so great job so far. <laughs> <laughs> well, you should have asked a question as the guest then too. You could have done that and that would have been cool. So yes. um, I don't see any new uh, questions in the in the Q&A, so uh, maybe, you know, back to you, Kenny, what are some of the Dell differentiators when it comes to delivering Microsoft hybrid cloud? What, where do you see that? So um, the Dell differentiators are, I guess, many and, and manifold around this. This is not something which is new to us. We've been working with Microsoft on their hybrid cloud solutions since the very first iterations of these back in the, uh, the, the DHCS days and the CPS days back in the day with Microsoft when we were building these things with, uh, with Hyper-V and System Center and Windows. Uh, uh, admin pack there, the old WAP days, and everything from then through to now has led us to a point where we're delivering massive differentiation and unique features. So just to touch on one or two of those, um, I guess uh, as Dell Technologies, we are the market leaders in HCI all up uh, across the board, and with that comes the knowledge of an awful lot of what goes into making a good HCI platform. Um, so one of the things that we see most across our HCI portfolio, which saves customers time and gives them a better experience, is giving full stack lifecycle management. Um, so when we talk to our customers, typically they say that the biggest pain point in maintaining infrastructure on premises is maintaining patch and update cadence, maintaining the hardware, uh, keeping that up to date, making sure you've got the right patches applied, making sure you find the right ones and get them applied in a timely manner, um, and making sure that when you phone up support, you don't get told, well, do you have the latest patches applied and then having to go and do that. So within Azure Stack HCI, we've built in an integration into Windows Admin Center to give a single path uh, uh, support uh, way to apply the full stack lifecycle management to Azure Stack HCI, encompassing both the Dell updates and the Microsoft updates there, which will do a cluster aware update, applying every single required update there without any impact to tenant workload there, moving seamlessly through each node one after the other, rebalancing workloads and storage as it goes until everything's up to date. And if you look at Azure Stack HCI, one of its great value propositions is that we're no longer following the Windows Server release lifecycle now. So this is a new operating system following its own release lifecycle. So instead of being released every, say, three years or so, we're going to have multiple updates per year which means that you want to be able to apply those updates and your Dell updates uh, consistently, repeatedly, repeatedly and uh, easily every single time. Uh, and that's what we've built into our uh, open manage integration for Windows Admin Center, the ability to consistently and repeatedly, uh, repeatedly apply those updates over and over again. Huge time saver, one of the massive, uh, massive benefits that we can bring to the Azure Stack HCI ecosystem there. And Kenny, if I could jump in. Um, to, to take that a step further, those updates that are being applied for the hardware aren't just Power Edge updates. They are specific to the Azure State Stack HCI solution. Um, the fact that we're delivering this as an integrated system, um, the, the fact that we have architected these specifically for this purpose, um, we are maintaining the update catalog specifically for these systems. So it's you don't have that question anymore of uh, which driver do I need, which firmware do I need, are these going to, to work properly together? Um, that integration with Windows Admin Center is going to point directly at the Azure Stack HCI 
uh, catalog uh, from Dell Technologies to ensure that you are looking at the latest certified and validated drivers for those systems. Um, you can run a very quick compliance check to see if anything is in need of update uh, and then uh, uh, kick off that, that automated update process uh, to do the, the cluster aware um, uh, update uh, to, to not in, uh, impact any of those workloads. Uh, and the fact that we have incorporated the Windows updates so that we're updating the hardware, so BIOS, firmware, drivers, and the operating system with a single reboot per node. Lisa, you want to take some of these questions that came in here maybe? Yes, read them out. absolutely. So we've got a question in from the audience asking, um, is it only specific hardware or specific vendors that you can get Azure Stack HCI and I suppose Azure Stack the portfolio uh, of products from? So who wants to answer that and give the sort of overview of the OEM approach to Azure Stack HCI, but also maybe talk a little bit about um, Dell's configurations and, and how we've approached that for Azure Stack HCI. I'm going to go with Michael. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be happy to answer that. Uh, so uh, within the OEM community, uh, when it comes to Azure Stack HCI, um, the, the OEMs uh, need to be um, uh, partners with Microsoft. Uh, and there's two routes that they can take for um, creating Azure Stack HCI solutions. Uh, the first one is what's referred to as a validated system, uh, meaning that they're validating the hardware architecture uh, for those. Um, the second uh, option is uh, what we refer to as an integrated system. And this is the path that Dell Technologies has chosen to go down, uh, that integrated system route. Uh, and the, the difference being uh, we're going through uh, a stronger validation process and we're also including that lifecycle management for the solution. Uh, so it's not just, yes, we've tested this hardware, it's going to work for you, um, but actually going through the process of uh, automating the deployment of the clusters, uh, automating the lifecycle management and the updating of those clusters over time. Uh, the way we support the solution is as a solution. So if, if you do have a hardware failure, uh, when you call up support, we see that it is uh, an Azure Stack HCI solution, and then we, sure, we ensure that um, uh, the replacement component for that is uh, not just on the hardware compatibility list for Azure Stack HCI, uh, but is also um, uh, going to work with the rest of the hardware that's in that system. We see that as a solution, and, and we support it as a solution. Hey Mike, this is Leanne. I'm gonna I'm gonna pivot on that as well, just to add. Uh, I think the one key thing to to also consider, based on the investment that we've made, in regards to the um, hyperconverged infrastructure, and of course the, the integrated system and solution for HCI that we've directed, we've made significant engineering investment behind that, um, and also behind that's been a significant amount of investment around the support model and mechanisms to um, enable our customers to have. Uh, the speed to time to value. And as you're making these investments, we want to obviously consider how you'll be able to actually execute and, and deliver with that type of solution in the operation side of it to ensure that operationally you're not inhibited by certain operational tasks that you obviously have to take upon yourself to actually perform and do. So you'll see a lot of the things that have been defined and, and developed to help you accelerate that process to start to use and consume. But then also you have this huge backing behind through Dell Technology Services that can assist you even further. And so we deliver a lot of consulting expertise. We deliver a lot of managed services and Red Sea programs, but then we also deliver certain guidance and uh, effectiveness to help you actually start to use and consume. Um, so I want to make sure I pointed those things out, but it's a huge differentiator when we look at kind of the value add that we provide. Well, there's a bunch of questions coming in now, Lisa. You want to pick yeah. one? So um, let's just quickly, if we can, answer the difference between the Windows Server OS and the Azure Stack HCI OS. I'm going to give this one to Kenny. We have linked a brilliant video um, that our team, including Michael Wells, um, so Michael, actually, if you want to take it, you can go. Um, but we've linked a video which is absolutely brilliant. You should definitely check it out. It goes into great depth about the difference between the operating systems to help you choose what is right for you. 
um, because you know uh, that's the the wonders of Microsoft. They have an option for everyone, even if it does get a little confusing. <laughs> mm. So, Michael or Kenny, do you want to take that one? Yeah, I will jump in there and see if I can hold a candle to Michael and his explanations there. Um, I, I guess uh, up until this point, um, the way that we've delivered Azure Stack HCI has been by installing Windows Server on our validated uh, hardware and enabling certain roles and features within that to deliver the hyperconverged infrastructure. So you install Windows Server 2019, you enable the Hyper-V role, you enable the Storage Spaces Direct role, you enable the Software Defined Networking role, uh, the Skeleton File Server role, any of the, the roles and features you need within Windows Server to enable that. And then you don't touch any of those other roles in Windows Server, but they're still there. They're still latent within that. It is still the full fat Windows Server there. Um, what the new Azure Stack HCI operating system is, is effectively a, a fork of Windows Server with only the required uh, roles in there for running the HCI system. So it only has Hyper-V and Storage Spaces Direct and the software defined networking and softs and other roles and features that you need to deliver things like shielded VMs and so on there to deliver a hyper-converged infrastructure system. So that makes it a much smaller footprint OS, great. That makes it great from a security posture perspective, much smaller footprint to attack. Um, and then when uh, we go back to what I said earlier about this now getting multiple updates per year, as opposed to being on the Windows Server release cycle, the Azure Stack HCI team are now able to bring new, new features to bear much, much faster with the new Azure Stack HCI OS because they no longer have to worry about breaking Windows Server downstream when they do so. Uh, so it's a much more agile operating system. Um, and, and a much better, uh, better uh, dedicated operating system for running hyperconverged infrastructure. From a licensing perspective, there are some fairly significant changes as well. Uh, in the past, we would license Azure Stack HCI with Windows Server uh, data center licenses and use those to license the entire infrastructure. Now, this is delivered as an Azure service. So you license the Azure Stack HCI infrastructure as an Azure service and pay $10 per physical core per month to get, well, every feature within Azure Stack HCI there, plus your management pane with Windows Admin Center. Um, so that gives you unlimited use of Storage Spaces Direct, unlimited use of the software defined networking capabilities, uh, full use of Windows Admin Center, plus the uh, the open managed integrations and so on within there are all included within this solution uh, at $10 per physical core per month. And then you license your Windows Server or, or Linux support uh, for the VMs on top of that. Hopefully that answers that. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Actually, what, what, one other thing I was actually, I'm just going to stay on there and say, actually, one other thing is, it's easy to say, well, I'll stick with Windows Server version or I'll maybe not go to the Azure Stack HCI OS one yet uh, for various reasons. And that's because there are major crossovers between these now. They haven't diverged very much, but it's worth bearing in mind that all the future investments into Azure Stack HCI are going into the Azure Stack HCI operating system. So if you buy an Azure Stack HCI system now and choose to install Windows Server 2019 on it. Yes, it may be almost in parity with Azure Stack HCI OS just now, but over time that's going to diverge more and more and more, uh, both from a, a Microsoft and a Dell features perspective there and an Azure integration perspective as well. So be cognizant of what it means, not just today, but also in three years, five years, however long you want to run this system for. Yeah, yep. absolutely. It's um, day one of this OS. And as you, as you said, it's likely to progress and update and evolve much faster than um, its sort of previous friend. Michael, were you going to jump in there? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say a, a perfect example of, of that type of um, uh, separation uh, is uh, Azure Stack HCI and the new HCI OS introduced the concept of stretch clustering, uh, which is something that's not available in Windows Server. Uh, so having the ability to have uh, an Azure Stack HCI cluster that spans two sites uh, it is a new feature that's, that's specifically for Azure Stack HCI. So um, you're going to see more and more capabilities like that um, that, that make this solution unique. There's a brand new white paper that dropped today on that exact topic. So mm -hmm. stretch cluster, that's a really good one to go out and reference. Absolutely. Um, Kenny, I think both you and Michael there touched on Azure integration and we have a question. Um, what does the Azure Stack node look like in the Azure portal? Is it used through host groups to pin specific VMs, etc.? But just to widen that question up, what are the Azure integration points with Azure Stack HCI OS? Sure. 
So I guess there are two ways you can look at the, the Azure integrations. There's how it looks within the Azure portal, and then there's how Azure looks within Windows Admin Center, and both of these are important. So right now, from an Azure perspective, um, if you log into the Azure portal and you've registered your Azure Stack HCI properly, you will see all the different nodes of your Azure Stack HCI system uh, listed there within the Azure portal, including things like your Dell service tags there uh, to allow you easy access to support for that, for example. Over time, that's going to include things like monitoring and uh, and management capabilities in there just now. But just now, it's very much a view of your hyperconverged infrastructure estate. So if you're running multiple Azure Stack HCIs, one great way to aggregate those into one place to see them all is within the Azure portal there. From a day-to-day -day management perspective, that's pretty much all done from Windows Admin Center today, uh, and that remains so. Within Windows Admin Center, there are lots of Azure integrations included in there. So you can do things like manage Azure Site Recovery or Azure Backup or Azure Monitor or uh, Azure Network Controller or all sorts of different uh, Azure services right from within Windows Admin Center. So I saw there was one question, which is how does Azure Stack HCI provide disaster recovery? Uh, and I'm going to jump on that as well because we've got five minutes and just segue this and put them together and mash them into one question because uh, there are a couple of ways that you can do disaster recovery within Azure Stack HCI natively there. So within the Windows Admin Center portal, you can configure Azure Site Recovery to deliver failover either to the Azure Public Cloud or to another Azure Stack HCI instance uh, very easily from within Windows Admin Center there. Or as Michael said, you can have very seamless, easy, simple uh, uh, failover between different clusters using the stretch clustering feature now, uh, which is new and unique to Azure Stack HCI there. Or as you've done with Hyper-V in the past, you can leverage third-party tooling, which will still work with Azure Stack HCI to deliver that, uh, that disaster recovery across sites there. So any old solutions for Hyper-V will continue to work with Azure Stack HCI. New solutions like integrations with Azure Site Recovery will work and brand new integrations like the stretch clustering feature will also work to deliver even more automation. So a great blend of the old and the new uh, sort of mashing that hybrid cloud model together on-prem and in the public cloud. Awesome, thank you. Um, so we only have a few minutes left. Um, do we want to sort of focus down on uh, the Robo and VDI use cases with Azure Stack HCI? Because those are two um, super exciting use cases and one we are definitely seeing a lot of customers take advantage of. Um, I don't know if Leon or Michael, you want to um, answer that question? Apologies for the cat. <laughs> so um, I can jump in and talk from a, a hardware perspective, and then I'll hand it over to you, Leon, for the, the services perspective. Um, but uh, one of the, the best things for the robo use case is um, the fact that we can start as small as a two node cluster. Uh, and so like any HCI solution that, that leverages software to find storage, um, your storage network needs to be fast uh, for this solution to, to operate properly. Uh, and we give you the ability with two node, three node or four node clusters to run in what we call a switchless configuration where the nodes are directly interconnected to each other, uh, which means you don't have to maintain an expensive 25 gig or 100 gig storage backend. You don't have to um, maintain the switching hardware. You don't have to apply firmware or switch configurations or any of that. The nodes are directly interconnected together, so it's less for you to have to manage in those remote site locations. Yep, absolutely. And so in, from, a, from a services play and what we see particularly around our customers, they have unique, uh, you know, um, each coverage will have a consistent VDI experience or what they obviously are looking to, to obtain from a VDI with the particular applications. And so we tend to go through and we obviously identify through doing assessing of those workloads, um, making sure that one, that the workloads themselves will be effectively be used um, and provision provide through the VDI um, uh, experience. But then also what we do is we ensure that from HCI perspective, architecture wise, so that customers understand how they can grow and actually start to extend beyond just the current um, framework that they may have in place from a traditional VDI type of approach. So it allows them to extend into the Azure Public Cloud and take advantage of certain things within Azure Public, as well as obviously on-prem from Azure Stack HCI and uh, effective use of that and being able to share data. So we wanna make sure that we go through and uh, the customer experience is one that we focus on. And it's the unique scenarios that we obviously uncover 
that the customer may not be familiar with uh, uh, and understand, but we make sure that we obviously go through those details. So. Awesome. And does anyone want to give a bit of a shout out to our new EMD um, offerings that we launched today, specifically around this topic? We'll try and squeeze it in in the last minute. Kenny's itching to go. Kenny, over to you. I can tell. I can see it. I, I was actually talking on mute, just saying I'm not an attention hog there. Uh, but yes, absolutely. Today, uh, today we announced some AMD-based offerings coming for Azure Stack HCI in the near term, including with our uh, AX6515 and 7525 offerings there. Um, a single socket and a dual socket offering there, one for remote branch office, one for more dense uh, configurations up to 128 cores, I think there, which is crazy. But from the AX6515 perspective, this is really designed for that robo type offering there uh, for that uh, remote branch office scenario where you want a small footprint, uh, pretty, pretty short depth uh, and potentially single socket server there for running these robo uh, solutions there. We have just announced that we will be bringing these to market in, in the near term. So look out for those for robo in particular uh, imminently. Awesome. awesome. Well, well. We covered a lot there, guys. Well done. Well done. Um, um, thanks to everyone who joined our session. Much appreciated. Um, thanks for taking the time and your busy MS Ignite schedule. Um, if you guys have any questions at all um, after this, please just reach out to, I don't know if we have any contacts available, but we're all available on LinkedIn, social media, all that kind of jazz, so you can reach out to us. And, oh, we have a chat room, I'm being told. So, oh yes, we have our, you can stop by Adele Booth. I keep forgetting that we have this amazing, these amazing features within this virtual event. You can stop by our Dell virtual booth and have a chat. Yes, do that. Okay, everybody. <laughs> Thanks for joining and thanks for bearing with me and my cats. <laughs> thanks, team. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye.